Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on 6 June here, ECB day. Should be quiet European morning. We do have um, some speakers. Kuroda from Japan is speaking. Carney from the BOE is speaking this morning. So that might uh, create a little bit of a stir. Uh, final employment change out of the, out of um, Europe and revised GDP, neither of which are going to move too much. So basically, we're all just waiting for the ECB. ECB is tricky. We are all, of course, uh, waiting for terms for the TLTRO. Uh, but even the best case scenario, uh, deposit rate in four years. So this is this is kind of almost being priced in now. Um, might be a dud today. I don't know. I don't know. Charts look very bearish here. We obviously bearish engulfed here. You can see printed that high through this trend line uh, at 07 and then closed at 20. We haven't made a new low yet. So going into this thing massively short. Um, is tricky unless you sold yesterday and your shorts are between sort of 80 and 05 then I suggest we can sit but if you're square now and certainly the tactical books out there intraday books you gotta be careful here um, the main reason is um, a lot of the focus of the ECB is now really who's going to be Draghi's successor we won't know this at least until um, June 20th, which is the EU Leaders Summit. So, so we have two focuses. We have TLTRO focus, and then we have who's going to succeed Draghi focus. So I don't know. They're they're both kind of pushing and pulling against each other. Uh, change in terms for the TLTRO is probably negative on the margins, um, but if Weidman comes in, this is going to be euro positive. Anyway, um, we get a lot of time to think about this. Uh, we get a lot of time to watch price and consider what's going on. My bias is left um, euro just because of where boons are, uh, what the politics looks like, um, and let's see where the yield and the boons are today. Certainly hasn't changed much. It's BTP boons. 23 basis points. Um, and we we'll just have to see. Euro yen also looks very, very bearish. The charts look very, very bearish for Euro. The story looks very, very bearish. Um, will we get a massive reaction today? I'm not super sure. The market may already be waiting for NFP. But irregardless, we have to be ready. It is ECB. There could be surprises. Um, Topside surprises seem, or sort of hawkish surprises, seem very, very unlikely. Let's go to the charts. As we said, bearish engulfed in Euro. Um, cable, big turn bar. Dollar Swiss, massive big turn bar. Um, dollar Rand, which we haven't talked about in a while. Um, their GDP was awful on Wednesday. This thing can't get, a, get out of its own way. Um, a little bit out of rhythm here, so we're not going to make any calls on this. But it certainly does look like we're going to we're going to attack these 1505 highs eventually. Um, especially with looks like the big dollar has turned. Dollar yen also bullish engulfed yesterday. Uh, Aussie um, did not bearish engulf, but looks like a turn bar lack of energy today makes me suspicious so far kiwi looks like a turn dollar cad back in the middle of the range this is the weakest turn I would say 
um, and we printed a nice low down there at 60. Check out um, the risk of dollar CAD breaking 133.60 on Friday. NFP plus CAD employment. If you're going to take a punt on employment numbers on Friday, short dollar CAD um, is your horse. Probably get a chance to sell this thing back up at 30, maybe between 30 and 60 today. Um, because if Euro does get smashed, Dollar CAD will ease higher today. Check out this gold chart. As you can imagine, same thing. Couldn't quite clear 50, which is now the, the huge elephant point in the room. Uh, but haven't made a new low yet today. So all of these dollar turn bars look very dramatic, but none of them have confirmed yet, which is a little bit spooky. But of course, there's no, you know, everyone's on the sidelines going into ECB. Um, so there's really no energy to do this. Equities, we traded around equities a little bit uh, in the medium term book, got ourselves a better average. Still the same thing, we're going to be selling between 42 and 52, um, heading into this summit weekend. We don't really think this thing has the legs to get above 2860. Um, we'll keep our eyes on the news. Um, crude entered a bear market. Just got slaughtered yesterday down to 5066. We talked about this before. The first real big support is 48 bucks. Also, going to be hard for equities to plow higher with crude uh, in a bear market. We're just kind of one comment away um, from equities turning back bearish. But you need to be patient with this. Let this thing play out. Uh, bear market squeezes are notoriously insane. And finally, BTPs. Uh, we had a sort of Elon Musk moment yesterday when Comte said um, debt to GDP was going to come out at 2.1%. Um, Reminds me when uh, he said that on Twitter. I know he didn't say that on Twitter. He said he said that through the normal channels. But it reminds me when tu when Elon Musk said that um, Tesla stock was worth four hundred bucks, and the Saudis were going to buy out his company, and and um, you know we were all short at the time, and it was trading around two ninety. The next day, it opened at 380, uh, but we kind of all just said, this is complete bullshit. There's no way this is going to happen, and, and we know that um, you know, this is never going to trade above 400, and it was one of the easier shorts uh, around. I had a feeling that the just deja vu yesterday when, when um, Comte just said, listen, He's throwing these numbers out, like how could he possibly know? Uh, he has massive bias. He's really hoping and almost pleading with himself that uh, this isn't as bad as it looks. I just wanted to throw that out there. BTPs have been hysterically hard to trade. Uh, but um, I think we had a bit of an Elon Musk moment out there from the Italian government. For those of you who don't follow Tesla, it's trading around 170, I believe now. Um, we stopped shorting Tesla because we like Elon, but um, I don't know, BTPs, these things, uh, you kind of have to just lurk and be ready um, to smash them. Not today. Uh, this is now going to have to simmer a little bit, but... You know, the EU is now kicking the tires, and the EU is now threatening sanctions. And it looks like the beginning of a very bad and ugly story in Italy. So, just heads up out there, uh, BTPs. Today looks like they are going to open and make a new high, uh, whether it's sustainable or not. Uh, not sure, but fading it. Um, little bit dangerous here. You want to hit it as it's going down. Finally, 
NASDAQ 72.75 to 72.90 very very big resistance in the NASDAQ um, just playing the waiting game here as well as we are with minis all right I said enough uh, main focus is obviously uh, ECB today but we do have Kuroda uh, and Carney this morning I will not be trading either I will just be getting some fresh air thinking about strategies for the day book um, for ECB keep in mind if this is bearish um, we are a percent away from 11107 we bearished engulfed on a on a rejected trend line yesterday technically the downside looks massively in play um, I have no idea what he could say today it seems unlikely that there's some massive downside surprise but man the technicals are screaming sell uh, and the story is I would say mildly bearish the story in Europe is quite bearish but the story today in ECB is just mildly bearish um, but you do not want to be fading this thing at 111.50 or 60 because uh, if we see that kind of price it seems almost inevitable that we're gonna break 111.10 maybe today if it's down there or maybe non farms tomorrow um, anyway lot to think about uh, I suggest we all take the morning and think about different strategies. I'll chuck some ideas up onto Twitter. Uh, and with that, I wish you guys a very, very profitable day. Ciao.